Mike Review. <laughs> the Town of Gods. Okay, so welcome. I'm really excited today because I am reviewing what is one of my favorite mics of all time. I have wanted this microphone for a very long time, but I just couldn't find it to buy. Finally, I was able to get my hands on it. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the MXL V900. This is this huge thing that's directly in front of me. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. And in this video, we're basically going to talk about why I spent $400 on buying and shipping a condenser microphone when there are $50 microphones pretty much that sound really good on Amazon right now. Why would I do that? Basically, anybody who has been watching my channel for a very long time knows that I am the kind of person who can buy a $50 microphone and make it sound fantastic. So why would I spend $400 buying and shipping this particular microphone? And what exactly are the features that this microphone offers? And what are my thoughts about this microphone? In this video, let's talk about it. So first things first, the unboxing experience. You see, this microphone is different than many other microphones in the sense that it comes in a huge briefcase like so. The briefcase weighs around 12.5 pounds the last time that I checked and the microphone itself is just under three pounds. So as heavy as it is, it's not, it's, it's a, it's a beefy, it's a beefy microphone, but as heavy as it is, it's not so bad. As long as you have a decent boom arm to handle it or a microphone stand, you should be absolutely fine. Now, when you open up this huge, briefcase that they actually included with the microphone you're basically going to get a manual basically this is the paperwork that tells you everything that comes with the microphone basically the sensitivity the polar pattern etc etc impedance and all that you're going to get another document that's going to tell you about getting the best results with your mxl microphone which is basically a document telling you how to use microphones generally not just mxl microphones but Thoughtful of them to have that. You're going to get a cleaning cloth, which is this microfiber cloth here. And you're going to get a key for the briefcase if you want to be locking your microphone up for whatever reason. But that about concludes everything that you're going to get in the box, aside the microphone itself, obviously. And it also comes with an XLR cable, which I have already connected to my boom arm right now, as you can see. So Beyond the unboxing experience, let's talk about the physical aspects of this microphone. And now, as you can see, this is not a microphone that looks like anything that you're probably used to already. It's, it's a beefy microphone. It's a boxy microphone. It's large diaphragm. It looks different. It's really huge. It's completely metal. I don't know if you can. I don't actually want to eat that so it doesn't ruin the audio that I'm recording right now. But yeah, it's a very, very beefy microphone. And it looks fantastic. It looks very retro. It's something that you would see in like a classic 1940, 1950s movie. And I really, really like the aesthetics of the microphone. Now, as far as this microphone goes, it's a cardioid condenser microphone that requires 48 volts of phantom power to be able to function properly. So if you want to use this microphone to its best, you're going to need an audio interface or some sort of field recorder that can provide 48 volts of phantom power. Right now, I have this hooked up to my M Audio Air 192.4. This is my primary audio interface of choice. And it's just this microphone connected. And I think for the most part, this helps me with bringing out the best dynamic range with this microphone. And it sounds pretty much fantastic. Now, moving away from the physical bits of the microphone, let's talk about the technical specs of this microphone. This microphone basically has a cardioid pickup pattern, but when you look at the polar pattern image, you can see that this is not just a direct cardioid pickup pattern. It's closer to a super cardioid than a cardioid. There's, you know, you, you see that pickup pattern thing drawn on the screen. I'm going to have it on the screen right now so that you can see it. So yeah, it's a cardioid pickup pattern, but it's closer to super cardioid. And this microphone has a frequency response range of 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. It's got an equivalent noise level of about 14 dB. And like I said before, it does require 48 volts of phantom power to function properly. So what do I think about the sound of this microphone? I think it's really warm. I think it's really full. I think for vocals and spoken word, like what I'm doing right now, you're going to have no problems using this microphone. It's basically going to sit atop your mix and it's going to sound fantastic. It's going to sound vibrant and it's going to sound very, very full. You're not going to have any issues if you buy this microphone because you want to use it for vocals. However, what I've noticed with this microphone is a lot of people who purchased it for the last few years, I've mostly bought it because they wanted to modify this microphone into like a ribbing stage microphone for performances, which 
is great, but I think the microphone itself, on its own rights, by its own merits, sounds fantastic. So I have no intentions to actually modify this microphone. I am going to continue to use the condenser capsule in this, and I am going to love it. For God knows how many years I'm going to keep this microphone. But anyway, I am not currently using a pop filter on this microphone, so you are probably picking up a few plosives here and there. But the thing is, this microphone should actually be doing a really good job of rejecting plosives. The reason why I say that is, as I can see this right now, I am going to try to show this in the video as much as possible. There is like a double wire mesh thing going on inside of the microphone's metal grill that's outside. So it should be doing a good job of rejecting plosives, but you will still pick up some plosives, especially if you're doing voiceover work and you're actually moving really, really close and you want to do like some proximity effect, you're definitely going to be picking up a lot of plosives from that. But anyway, beyond that though, the microphone actually sounds fantastic. You can actually use any cheap $5, $8 pop filter from Amazon with this microphone because the design of this does not support any shock mount that I know of. So you are going to have to just use this microphone the way that it's mounted and attach a pop filter of some kind that you like. Basically, you can pick a more expensive pop filter that's a wire mesh, or you can pick a cheap double-sided pop filter and be completely done with it. It's going to sound fantastic either ways. So sound quality wise, this is an excellent microphone for vocals. When it comes to the build quality, it's a metal microphone and it's going to be durable AF. And it also comes in a huge briefcase that protects it even further. So you should be absolutely fine on the build quality side of things. As far as the audio quality goes, as you can hear, this is what this microphone sounds like. And if at any point in this video, I have basically EQ'd or compressed this audio or boosted it in any way, I'm going to leave it in the bottom of the page so that you can see what I have done to the audio. And for the most part, all of the audio that you've been listening to in this video was recorded with this microphone. Sounds fantastic, right? I know. So ultimately, this is not a cheap microphone. Uh, as much as I would always advise people to buy stuff brand new and buy it from Amazon, because if there's anything wrong with the product, you can always send it back. This is still going to cost you somewhere between $300 and $400 on Amazon. And you can actually find this microphone used cheaper, secondhand, third hand, whatever, for somewhere around 200 or maybe even less if you're lucky on eBay. Now, I will not advise you to go and buy a 200 plus dollar microphone from eBay because most of the people selling stuff there are selling as is and they will not take returns. But if you're fine with taking that risk, you can go try to find an MXL V900 on eBay. But if you're going to have to buy this directly from Amazon, where it's like the MXL official store, this is going to set you back somewhere between $350 to $400, depending on where you live and what the tax is for where you live. So ultimately, what's my final verdict for this microphone? It's a $400 microphone that sounds like a $400 microphone. It is worth every penny. In fact, I cannot believe how much of a difference this made to my audio going from something like a Samsung G Tri Pro or a $50 USB microphone that I buy from Amazon to this setup pretty much. If you'd also like to check out my audio interface that I'm using to record this, I'm going to have links in the description for you to check out this microphone and my audio interface so you can shop my entire audio bundle. And that is pretty much it. Uh, you can decide for yourself if you think this microphone is worth the money. And if you have any other microphones that you'd like me to check out and review on my channel, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make sure to respond as soon as I see it. Thank you so much for watching. And I guess I will see you on another video that was shot by Kagan. Peace. The kind of guy.